Scripture teaches us that, that it begins with wisdom and God. Proverbs chapter 8, let's read those verses that I've uh, got on your paper there. Doth not wisdom cry? Wisdom as a person or as a thing. And understanding put forth her voice, the her meaning wisdom. Receive my instructions, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Riches and honor are with me, wisdom. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. And then if you will, let's read this next verse and then we'll hold up on our uh, paper here. Proverbs 16, 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than be chosen than silver? Solomon the preacher, the son of David, the king of Israel, Pen these words concerning wisdom. The Lord picked the right person to give us this message because Solomon was a wise man. He was wise because God made him wise. If you would, look down at your next pa uh, paper there, 1 Kings 3, verse 12. Build I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee, God speaking to Solomon, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall arise like unto thee. When King Solomon was installed as the king of Israel, he prayed earnestly and sought wisdom because he knew that he was going to need it to govern the people of God. And automatically we see his uh, wisdom played out. In the third chapter of the uh, The scripture says that there were two harlots or prostitutes that were living in the same house. And they came before Solomon. They had a problem. One said to Solomon, O king, I was living with this lady. She in this, I was in this house and she was in this house. And a few days ago I had a baby. Three days later, she has a baby. And I was sleeping with my baby. And she was sleeping with her baby. She overlaid her baby, means she slept on the baby, perhaps an arm or something. And the baby was smothered to death. By the way, lest I leave that, that does happen. My grandmother, after she had my mother, my mother was the second of six daughters. After she had my mother, she had the third one named Marcella. My grandmother, asleep at night, apparently rolled over on Marcella and smothered her to death. Accidentally, it does happen. So these two harlots are saying, well, she overslept. She, 
she smothered the baby to death. And when I woke, she had taken the dead baby and placed it for me. And she has the live baby. And they're asking Solomon who should get the baby. Y'all remember the story? Solomon said, okay. We've got two mothers claiming the same baby. Let's take a knife and let's cut this baby in half. Can you imagine? He knew right well that the real mother didn't want her child to die. And sure enough, the mother said, no, don't, don't touch that baby. Let her have it. Solomon said, give the baby to this woman because it was indeed her child. And that act inspired the people of Israel. And people came from everywhere to see the wisdom of Solomon. But Solomon compares wisdom to gold. And we'd say, which is a greater considering the gold market? Well, I can tell you this much, wisdom is invaluable. Godly wisdom is the only kind of wisdom there is because it begins with God. But to be the right kind of servant of God, all of us must be wise. Jesus told his followers to be as wise as serpents, but harmless as a dove. During the week, Linda and I, first couple days of the week, we were up in Huntington, our place up the way. Linda always, when we go to Walmart, she always buys bird seed. We place them out on the sidewalk there in front of the house where we can watch them through the glass. And those doves come from everywhere along with the uh, cardinals and uh, jaybirds, uh, uh, all kinds of birds. But we can watch those doves. And they're the meekest one that they are. They won't touch the other birds, even though they're much larger than the little small town birds. The Lord said that we should be as harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. I've never talked to a serpent. I don't like serpents. We've had to kill a few up the way up there. But apparently they're wise. Their survival rate, I guess, is great. But I stay away from where I know this is known places for snakes or serpents. But the Lord told us to be as wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. And Brother Enrique and his soul winners group, they have to apply these when they're going knocking on people's doors and wanting to talk to them about the Lord. And I can tell you this much, you'll find a, a lot of people that's not for that. A lot of them put up signs, don't be bothered, don't they? Don't knock on my door. But already, there's resistance, isn't it? But Proverbs 1, verse 5, if you will, look down at your next paper there. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. A wise man. A wise man will hear the whole story before he comments. The Lord told us not to judge a matter before we heard the matter. You can't make judgment on one thing, can you? The old saying goes, there's two sides of every story. There's much involved in every story. But Solomon used the ant 
in chapter 6. We won't turn there, but he used the ant as an example. He said, in the summer, the ant prepared for the winter. And folks, we'd do well to follow that same pattern. We need to, as the old saying goes, make hay while the sun shines. I was sharing with the, the folks back here a while ago, some of the men that's just talking. And I hadn't planned on using this as an illustration, but it fits here. I had a friend of mine many years ago, because I've been here uh, June will be 42 years. But this guy came and talked to them about being the pastor of this church. I'd known him for years. He lived up at Shepherd, Texas up here. He had an awful birthmark across his face. I mean, it was sad. A birthmark that just, you do a double take to look at him straight on in the face. Doesn't mean he didn't love the Lord. But they asked him what he'd do about visiting and so forth and, and uh, getting the inactive church people back and, and about knocking on doors. And he used a scripture that I never heard before. <laughs> he used this way. He said, the scripture says that well, work while it's day because night cometh when no man can work. He said, that means you're not supposed to work at night. You're not supposed to knock on doors at night. That was his reasoning of this. But if you think about it, this man with this, and he couldn't help it now, by the way, with this gross birthmark across his face, and you're going to the door at night, and there he stood. But that was his way out is if he's not supposed to do that at night. <laughs> but folk, <laughs> again, we're to be as, as wise as a serpent, but as harmless as a dove. Now, now the reason I knew this is one of our old deacons that passed on now had told me the story about the man coming. And he, he rehearsed to me what happened. But, folk, we need to work while it's day Amen. because night is coming. We all have a limited amount of time that the Lord puts us here, every one of us. This morning I saw on the news where George Foreman, we, everybody knows George Foreman, likes him, if, if you will, Had 12 kids. Woke up this morning and one of them died. They found her dead, 42 years old. She was a boxer, I believe. You think 42, that's young when you get my age. But folk, if you pick up the old bit page, you read further, there were babies that died also today. We don't have a set time. I heard a fellow say one time, he said it erroneously because he took the scripture and used it, but he, he didn't use it appropriately. He said, you know, the Lord only promised us 70 years. Y'all ever heard that? The Lord didn't promise us 70 years, folk. Israel sang that song as they were already condemned in the wilderness. They couldn't cross Jordan because they had sinned, and God said, all of you now 20 years old and upward, you can't go. You're going to die in the wilderness. And that's when that song was written about 70 years at the most. If they be here. But our time is limited. Even if we live like Methuselah did 969 years. He'd been gone now for uh, hundreds or thousands of years. He'd been dead. So our time is limited. Never forget that. And that's why Solomon told us we should look at the ant 
we just need to do what we got to do while it's doable. The doors are open right now for us to knock on doors, but one of these days in, in, in certain countries and what have you, many countries where it's not allowed. But we come back to the thought, how does one attain wisdom? Again, it begins with God. It begins with the knowledge of God. I always try to define myself. This is my own uh, definition of wisdom. It's knowledge applied. You got to have the knowledge before you can apply it. The right kind of knowledge, again, begins with Him. Let me tell you again how Solomon got the knowledge. He got it through prayer. He sought the Lord for wisdom. He said, Lord, I'm going to need this to rule and reign over your people. Let's talk about using wisdom a moment, how to use it. For the honor and glory of Christ, we apply wisdom. In being a vessel of honor, and we need to be vessels of honor, in being a witness for Him, if you will, look at Proverbs 11, verse 30, and you soul winners particularly, y'all know this verse. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Well, as Brother Enrique pointed out, you got people that are headed to the devil's hell. And them knocking on the doors yesterday at the little town of Elsa, Texas, May have been the only time they've ever heard the true gospel. And it was wise in them going and doing what God laid out to be done. And as we apply our wisdom, we do it to combat Satan, don't we? We know how he works. We need to know that. We need to know our enemy, don't we? He knows how to tempt us, does he not? He caught Solomon, the man that wrote these words, in a weak moment. You know what Solomon did? You talking about greedy? He took 700 wives, heathen women, and 300 secondary wife concubines, 1,000 wives. Here was a white man of wisdom, but he, temptation got him. Satan is the author of temptation. And Solomon did all this. And yet him being the wisest man that ever lived. Folk that points out if it could happen to Solomon, it could happen to you. We have to be careful, don't we? We have to know our enemy. I like sports. I like to see these high school boys, they work hard, and I saw some of them, they, they, I'm not much of a basketball fan, but I couldn't help but watch some. They were playing for the state championship the last couple, three days. Some of those boys, 18 years old, big tears run out of their eyes as they lost the game. Klein Forrest up here had won like 26 in a row until they got to the last game. I got beat by four points yesterday.
But in doing all this, the coaches knew what they were going to be faced with. They knew who were the best players and what have you. And they learned what their opposition was going to be. And, folks, that's true in any game of life. You need to know your opposition. Or as in the case of sports, we call it competition, don't we? And you need to exploit the weak points, don't you? If you know you can score and get ahead, you do that, whatever it takes. The point being is they need to know what you're up against. And I can tell you this much, folks. As children of God, we're up against an enemy who was an enemy of Christ. His name hadn't changed. It's still Satan, the devil. Belial. The bright morning star in the beginning. But he still tempts people. And you'll be tempted in many, many ways. You need to understand when he is tempting you the end results. I'll tell you what, it resulted in Solomon's sin. The nation of Israel was divided because of Israel's sin, and the 12 tribes have never reunited. The ten tribes became the, the nation of Israel. And the other two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, became the nation of Judah. And they, all because of Solomon's sin. And Solomon was called the preacher. He could still mess up. And folk, we're all human, aren't we? The nation of Israel had to pay for Solomon's sin. But we need to know our enemy. And that's just wisdom, folks. Wisdom is more precious than gold. Because it cannot be bought. Go down to the store and say, I want a five pounds worth of wisdom. <laughs> well, dummy, we don't sell that here. <laughs> I don't know a place it does, but you need wisdom to exist as a child of God. You need wisdom because it will glorify God. And let's look at these last two places, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. And here we are, folks. The very last verse is the one we need to take, carry with us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And, folk, again, it all begins with God. Amen. It begins with a fear of him. The Lord told us to fear not man who could only destroy the body, but fear God who could cast the soul into hell forever. And folks, God wants us to know and understand who he is. Jesus Christ is still the author and sustainer of life. As Apostle Paul said, in him we live, move, and have our being. Well, we're not in control. Our Lord has that authority. Through him, we're here today. 
And folk, if you don't include him in your life, you're defeating yourself. And let Satan have his way. Well, I tell you to you that we should worship him, sing praises unto him, tell all sinners about him, because he is again life. He's not one of the ways of life or salvation. He is the way. Without him, you're in trouble, my friend. Thank the Lord. He made it possible when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly heart. You're here this morning, and the Lord wants you to make a move, whatever it may be. Our song leader and pianist is going to come. We're going to have one verse of an invitation song this morning. If you're here and you feel like the Lord having you to uh, make a decision concerning him, would you do that today as we stand together and as we sing what number? 558.